Using potting soil as an aquarium substrate has been around for years, but many people prefer cleaner methods and use aquatic soils, which can be a little more expensive and they need to be replaced every now and then. Now, potting soil can be the basis of your aquarium's health, but after a while, a couple of questions may arise and the one that I see very often is, should I do water changes and how often? Now, Diana Wallstead supports in her book that organic compounds in the water are beneficial for many reasons, but that's for another time. Let's just say that dissolved compounds provide stability and they promote your aquarium's overall health. Also, if a dirt tank has been stable for a month or two, you don't really need to remove the nitrates since the plants will always consume the excess of nitrogen and it will always be within acceptable limits. Paradoxically, a heavily planted tank might show zero nitrates and plants will still be thriving. So according to the book, you should just add a water that's been evaporating. But it's not always the case. Let me break down the most common reasons you should or you could perform water changes in a dirty tank and I will discuss a little bit about the dangers of doing so. Now, when you first start your dirty tank, the first days could be a little, a little chaotic. Potting soils are different, they have different uh, compounds, they are made of different uh, types of soils, different concentrations of moss, um, they could have different concentrations of metals. So during the first days until the plants settle, the bacteria settle, um, the organic compounds settle in the water, the water can be pretty toxic for both plants and fish. Now you might have seen um, my uh, large 35 gallon beta tank and I did put the fish right away in. I got a little too cocky so I thought I would just add a little more prime and I would be okay nitrate were within acceptable limits, no ammonia, no nitrites, uh, and I thought, okay, I will OD on prime and the metals will be bound to the um, conditioner. Um, unfortunately, a couple of days later, I had one fish developing dropsy, and I think another one is sick now, so I have it separated. I don't think the fish will recover, and I've also seen signs of distress on some of my plants. So I'm pretty sure it's some kind of a metal toxicity with a fish that's been stressed from the transportation. So. Yeah, during the first days, don't be so sure that the water is going to be okay. And it's going to be okay like if you do a couple of water changes. So yeah, the first days can be a mess. Now, another reason you could perform water changes if is if you're suffering of extensive algae growth, like a huge outbreak of algae. Now it's not going to help controlling the algae, but you don't want all that algae dying in your aquarium. If that mass of algae dies in your aquarium, it can wreak havoc, like it can destroy your aquarium's um, stability and the uh, scale might tip off to the dangerous side and your fish can suffocate or 
die from toxins that could be released from the cells. Now, another reason you might want to do a water change is, let's say you have a lot of dying matter. It's similar to algae, but not quite. Now, depending on the dying matter, like if it's a couple of snails, I think your aquarium will be okay. But if you're hosting like very um, sensitive species, you could do a couple of water changes. Um, let's say you get a bunch of uh, aquatic plants and they were in the immersed form. And when you submerge them, you see this melting of the leaves. This is considered dying matter. If there is no healthy plant to absorb the ammonia produced, you will have problems. You will have ammonia spikes. So you should perform a couple of water changes. Another reason you should do water changes is, let's say you do your weekly tests, your bi-weekly tests, and you see that you have nitrates or nitrates or even worse, ammonia. Ammonia spikes can be very common during the first month of Wall Street Tank. So what you should do is perform water changes and those a little more of uh, prime if you have like a water conditioner that is detoxifying ammonia, you should see the packages, instructions. Um, I think I've read that for Seekins Prime, it's five, five times the dose if you have like uh, ammonia, of, uh, if you have detectable ammonia, but I'm not so sure about it. I have to look it up. I've never really had a problem with it, so I didn't really care. So yeah. But... A good reason to perform water changes is when nitrogen is not safe for your fish. Now another reason you should perform water changes is let's say you get a fish and you did not quarantine it and you put it in the aquarium just like I did and you see it gets sick. Sometimes you can't really predict why the fish is getting sick why it got sick, if it was your water, if it was your aquarium. I've had a couple of fish die. I had all of my resboras die within uh, a week. I guess they were not acclimated probably, properly, I'm not sure. I have these two bettas, one's developed, like it's, it's developed dropsy like it's it's horrible it's all scaly and I'm thinking of um, euthanizing her the other one I'm not so sure she's a little bloaty but um, I'm not sure if she will develop dropsy but I think she will so let's say you have a sick fish do massive water changes I, I did a 90% water change because I was not sure what was going wrong in the tank. Like, my readings were okay, but my fish were getting sick. Uh, it could be a sick fish. It can be a virus. It can be bacteria. So, and even though I'm a doctor, I'm not pro on medication. So, um, first, I want to see how it will develop. One fish is cannot be saved. The other, hmm, maybe it can be. So, yeah, I'm just giving some thought about it like I hope the one will recover the other one is not going to recover so yeah sick fish equals water changes another reason you should perform water changes is let's say you had sick fish and you have added um, medication in your aquarium always go by the manufacturer's um, leaflet like the dosage should, should should be what the manufacturer says like don't 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 do experiments on your own because it's not okay overdosing a little bit because fish live in the water and they it's like they are swimming in the medicine 
it's not like us people where we just take a pill and then we excrete it. It's a whole different story with fish. So do not overdose. And once therapy is done, you either add an active carbon filter or perform water changes. Now, last but not least, you can do a couple of water changes when your tank does not look good. And when I say it does not look good, I'm talking about appearances. Depending on your substrate, on the driftwood, on the organic compounds that have been dissolved, on the humic substances, like all those stuff that can give your water a brown, a yellow, a green tinge, you can do water changes. But keep things reasonable because the more water changes you do, the more of the organic compounds will be removed. And the more of them that you will remove, the less CO2 will be available for your plants. So, yeah, th this is a little, like, it's a delicate matter. It goes, like, uh, depending on how you, how you want your tank water to look. So, it's all in appearances, but don't overdo it. Now, another thing that I've been um, seeing is how much water should I change? Keep in mind that the more aged the water in the aquarium, the more different its parameters will be from your water source. So if you're using tap water and you haven't done a water change for, let's say, six months, the water in your aquarium will have different properties from the water coming from tap. So if you are hosting like delicate species like shrimps um, do not perform massive water changes you can keep on doing small water changes like 10% one day 10% another day 10% another day keep in mind that if you want to do like a 90% water change it's not 9 changes of 10% because when you will be removing water the next day, you will be removing a part of the new water. So when you will be like around, let's say, six, seven days from uh, the beginning of your water changing schedule, you'll be removing half of the new water. And you can be a little more aggressive on the water changes on the end of your water changing schedule because the water you will be removing will be almost identical to the water from your source. So I think that was it. That was about water changes. I hope you don't um, face uh, problems with that require water changes. Unfortunately, dying fish and sick fish are a part of the hobby, so um, let's say let's let's hope let's hope your fish are fine and, uh, and my fish are the only sick fish around. So yeah. So I guess this was it. Thank you for watching. Um, you can like, uh, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, whatever, whatever suits best for you. If you liked it. If you didn't like it, you can click on the dislike button and unsubscribe or whatever. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.